Mental illness. In its simplest definition, we can describe it as a wide range of conditions that affect mood, thinking, and behavior. But as we all know, these two words have a greater and more personal meaning to all of us. These two words have caused distress, anger, passion, and hope in whatever context we have been introduced to it. In recent years, a more open and honest conversation about America's mental illness issues have sparked a great interest within communities. Much of this conversation is due to the deadly shootings occurring in American schools, which have left many baffled about possible solutions. Although mental health seems to be a roaring issue in the country, it is no question we can easily find it close to home. During this presentation, we will encounter how mental illness has and will affect all of us. We will understand that we can no longer not see the truth about mental illness. We will understand how we must judge its severity. And finally, we must put our knowledge to the test when creating a way to act. C. Unlike other illnesses, mental health doesn't usually take a physical shape, therefore it is harder to detect and observe. There are medical symptoms that can indicate an individual is suffering from mental illness, but because it involves emotion and personal cognition, it is highly subjective. For example, an individual with a mental illness can be oblivious to the fact they have it for years. And now watch this clip from A Beautiful Mind and see how the main character, John Forbes, played by Russell Crowe, accepts his schizophrenia as others try to do the same. John, uh, you can't ignore me forever. Charles, you've been a very good friend. The best. I won't talk to you again. I just can't. Same goes with you, baby girl. I was wondering if I'm at audio course. It's um, it's an honor, Professor. About the um, well, you know, I've been gone. No, they're not gone. Maybe they never will be. But I've gotten used to ignoring them, and I think as a result, they've kind of given up on me. I think that's what it's like with all our dreams and our nightmares, Martin. We've got to keep feeding them for them to stay alive. Well, John, they, they haunt you, though. Well, they're my past, Martin. Everybody's haunted by their past. It is important to recognize anyone is susceptible to mental illness. One in five Americans suffer from a mental illness at one point in their life. From individuals like entertainers and scientists to people we interact with daily, such as friends and family, many of us are not aware of the resources available to help us. Those who are knowledgeable often choose not to seek help due to social stigma. In the past, the public was quick to deem someone coping with mental health issues as crazy or simply weak. This notion is still present now and it ostracizes those struggling. Lack of mental health awareness is not just their problem, it is our problem as a community. Now listen how this psychiatrist explains the effects of mental illness stigma and how it affects our community here at home. Depression, or mental illness in general, still carries an enormous stigma. For whatever reason, people have respect for and take seriously physical ailments, but when it comes to mental illness, there is still tremendous discrimination. So the stigma that goes along with having depression or bipolar depression or schizophrenia or panic disorder, these things come with a great societal cost. I think it causes people not to talk about what they have, 
to be ashamed and embarrassed and to keep it to themselves. The bigger issue is that they don't then come to treatment. So often, because of the stigma, people will not get the help they need and suffer in silence and live a very unfulfilled life where the potential would be tremendous were they able to get treatment. Judge, over one in five New Yorkers each, each year suffers from a different mental illness. Many times, they do not receive the treatment and medication they need to help them stay healthy and lead successful lives. There is a stigma often with mental illness, not just in New York, but in the whole world, that these are just crazy people or drug addicts, but this is not true. These stigmas have many times led to those with mental illness ending in a jail, living near the poverty line, or in, this, or in some cases, suffering from homelessness. Instead of further pushing these suffering people to be more and more marginalized from society, we need to find ways to help our neighbors instead of pushing them away. During current New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio's term, he created a program to help New York City's mentally ill. He called this program Thrive NYC. Many mental health officials believe that this program really has done nothing or at, at the most very little to help those in New York suffering with mental illness. The mayor has said that the foundation has raised over $850 million to help the mentally ill, but in a public study about Thrive NYC, it showed that only $165 million has been used to help those people suffering with mental illness. Another way that NYC has failed in helping its mentally its in helping its citizens with mental illness is through its false promises to find and keep those people suffering in a safe and stable home. The New York Times wrote, wrote an article in the spring of 2017 saying that the city of New York agreed to move more than 4,000 mentally ill patients into stable and supportive housing. But after four years of this program, New York had only moved around 500 residents into new housing. The article tells the story of Diana Vila, who was forced out of her apartment over a decade ago when, her, when there was a fire, and, it's, and she is still waiting to be placed into a supportive home over a decade later. One way the city truly has been helping the mentally ill is by training police for the signs of someone who is suffering. If this training was implemented across all police departments, the officers would have more, abil more abilities to take someone to a hospital or rehab center where they can get the treatment that they need rather than sit in the jail cell for a few days. Throughout the Bible and Catholic social teaching, there are examples of people opening their arms to help a struggling neighbor. And this is what we need to do to help those around us suffering from a mental illness. Now that we understand mental illness, we must learn how to act to help our community and get involved. Here are some tips to help. Know how to talk to the person who is struggling in an appropriate manner. Be a good listener, express concern and offer support. Volunteer with local mental health awareness organizations. One mental health awareness organization is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. NAMI is a nationwide group representing people affected by mental illnesses in the United States. This organization provides education and shapes public policy for those suffering the effects of mental illness. Volunteer at work and make a difference in NYC well. You are able to be taught and tutored on how to detect and help those with mental illnesses for free. And finally, if you want to help closer to your home, you can get a campus contact training with SJU OK to help your classmates.